Good morning and welcome to VCC Connection. My name's Rick Francis. It's a joy to be with you today. Yesterday we had a, a leaders meeting in Fountain Square and one of the things that we did was we shared communion together. Adam Talent, the pastor of Victory, Victory Alliance Church, uh, he was encouraging us to, to take some inventory to look in so that when we came to the communion table, we wouldn't come in an unworthy fashion. And a lot of sermons have been on what's an unworthy fashion. It seemed like in, in Corinthians 11, it, it's had something to do with pigging out and eating because they were starved. And in the love feast, things got a little out of hand. The poor people didn't have food and who knows what all. But the application that we had was, was there anyone that we were holding kind of in prison through unforgiveness? And it seems to be a theme that the Holy Spirit's been talking to me about is forgiving. And uh, I, I know we go all the way back to our first day with Jesus when we asked him to forgive us our sins and come into our heart. And then as we grew, we realized, oh, we can't have forgiveness, uh, unforgiveness in our heart towards another brother or sister if we want the favor and the grace of the Lord on our life. That kind of comes from the teaching that we find in Matthew chapter 18 of the unjust steward. And Jesus sums up all of that. After this, this one steward had been forgiven all so much, he went against the one who owed him a little, and he was ruthless in how he dealt with him. And the master has that person thrown into prison. But the verse that catches is in verse 35 of Matthew chapter 18. It says, This is how my heavenly Father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother or sister from your heart. Now, the problem for us as believers is that we all have the language of forgiveness. Matter of fact, some of us are so slick with our language that we can forgive someone with all the right words, but in our heart, there's still no forgiveness. And it's like lining up our hearts with our language and letting our language pour forth from our heart to when we forgive, we're truly forgiving someone from the heart. And this morning I woke up and the Lord was laying someone on my heart because one of the challenges that I had yesterday was to try to think, Lord, is there anyone that I've got unforgiveness? And I really was coming up with a blank. I couldn't come up with anything. I didn't know. I'm not always the most self-aware person. So sometimes the Lord has to speak to me in a dream for me to realize, oh, I need to forgive so-and-so. And then as, I, as the Lord and I were talking this morning and, and I just realized all the dynamics that went behind that, I thought there's some real need for some deep, deep repentance and forgiveness and to extend that. Uh, to my sister and it's like oh yeah brothers and sisters we've we've got to we've got to get there and make sure that we're forgiven from the heart i was thinking sometimes i take offense in behalf of someone else who i felt probably is really hurt by another person Boy, I hate it when people talk the way I'm talking right now. Would you just give us a concrete example so that we're not going, bah, 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 bah. I hate when somebody, bah, bah, bah. but be that as it may, this is as good as I can get today. And it's like, yeah, the people that I was thinking might be offended, they're in heaven. They're not offended. They have no offense. There's nothing in their hearts for the sins that were committed against them. So why should I take on their offense or perceived offense in my heart for that? It's a trick of the evil one. It's a trick to keep us imprisoned. So when you think about communion and doing it in a worthy fashion, it means doing it with a heart that is ready to forgive as you have been forgiven. And as I, uh, as I think of that today, wanting to take communion again and just say, Lord, I truly want the grace to be able to forgive that person, not from just lip service and not from my Christian theology in my head, but from my heart. 
I want to be able to forgive that person and to forgive them completely. Sometimes you're in situations that forgiving is one thing, knowing how to continue to live either in relationship or not in relationship takes wisdom. Lord, what does love look like? How do I continue to proceed and to relate in a way that is not enabling, in a way that's not condemning? I need the wisdom from above so I know how to proceed in relationship and in life with this person. If you have someone like that, I want to encourage you. Don't just forgive with lip service and don't forgive from your theological understanding. Just being a good biblical person, but without the essence of your heart. Get the Bible and your heart to line up together and forgive deeply. So Father, we just take those that we may not even be aware of. We first, I guess we first ask, Holy Spirit, would you bring to remembrance anyone that we still hold in prison in our hearts that we need to forgive? Holy Spirit, would you enable us with the grace once again to look at the cross and to see what we've been forgiven so that we can extend that forgiveness to others? And then we pray, Father, for the wisdom to know how to proceed so that we don't move in unsanctified mercy. We don't move in a love that is not agape love, that we, we move with wisdom and love to see your purposes in those who've sinned against us. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.